check, check. Why create an automotive YouTube channel? So I have spent the day uh, asking myself that question, trying to, to, to draw out the roadmap to explain why I did this. OEM auction, dealer transport, remarketing, fixed ops, compliance, operations. That's the ecosystem as I've defined it today. And it was about education, information, and community. And that is the reason I created ATI Auto Business. We're going to be talking about that tonight, so stick around. We'll be right back. What's up, ecosystem? Welcome back to ATI Auto Business. Um, this is a different show tonight, and um, it's going to be a great show, but it's going to be different. And I have literally spent, I've spent all day kind of going through emails and looking at comments and the marketing and thinking about, you know, how did I get here? And I created the, you know, the show title, How Did I Get Here? Where, where is it? Right here. Um, and go ahead, jump in the live chat, say hello. Please do. That's awesome. Okay, the sound's okay? Awesome. Stefan family, thank you very much. There's a, there's a digital bell. I mean, look, the bell's gone. The original bell, it's, you know, it's archived. And uh, I, I don't do the ELD punch anymore. I stopped doing that. And... Uh, running the car hauler even seems a little strange. How did all this happen? What happened? What's what's happened in 1,000 videos, right? So we're going to do that tonight. But before we do, as always, I mean, I've got the news. Let's do some news. Oh, and I guess, yeah, I forgot that I, I recapped. Last week was a great show with Karsker. If you want to learn about Karsker, I encourage you to check out that show. Um, we did Industry Logistics. Yeah, that's right. I renamed. So Tuesday nights are now called Automotive Ecosystem. Thursdays are now called Industry Logistics because we weren't really doing much dispatching live. And the ecosystem really, I've tried to expand it as wide as I can in automotive, which doesn't seem to be, you know, and this is part of the story tonight is that like in media, I just, I've, I've always looked at things a little differently and I don't know of any other channels that try to cover it all. And that's a lofty statement, but I still, I see everybody's a niche. Now niches are important. I, to me, automotive is a niche. It's just, a, it's a gigantic niche. All right. Um, ATI looking at the, you know, the two shows and the views and the gosh, Jay, after a thousand videos, you're still in the hundreds. Yes, I am. I guess because automotive is too big of a niche. Um, I always tell people, you know, that's one of the things. See, I didn't grow up in automotive. Uh, my background is in media. No wonder I look at things differently just in, in automotive, but, um, my focus has always been to try to make great content. Even the way that I'm doing it right now, I see so much of what either is scripted or agenda or, I don't know, it's supposed to look like you guys are having fun, but it doesn't seem like you are. So I don't know if I'm going to watch and when people tell me, yeah, I watched it start to finish, that means it's, it felt like a conversation. That's my goal. I want to make a show that feels like a conversation because I would think that's, isn't that what you have in your private lives? You don't say, hey, Bob, great to see you at the truck stop joke here. <laughs> right? No. <laughs> no, that's not how... Real life works, and media should be a reflection of real life. But that's, you know, that's just me. Let's do some news. All right, here we go. Uh, 
So everybody's talking about Baltimore Bridge collapses after the ship collision. Um, this is fresh information. How old is it? It's uh, I think it happened at like one in the morning, uh, in the middle of the night, Monday night, late Monday night, and in automotive. Yeah, this affects the Baltimore port, which handles imports and exports for major automakers. Nissan, Toyota, GM, Volvo, Jaguar, Land Rover, VW. I mean, on and on it goes. A 948-foot container ships ship smashed into a four-lane bridge in the U.S. port of Baltimore, causing it to collapse. Everybody knows this now. Why do they know it? Because of mass media. Okay, let's see. Traffic was suspended at the port of Baltimore until further notice. It is the busiest port for car shipments handling more than, that's three quarters of a million vehicles in 2022, just in that port of Baltimore. The closure of one of the U.S.'s East Coast major ports threatens to disrupt supplies of goods from cars to coal and other commodities like sugar. We know what happens when you see mass disruption. Hold on to your hats. Yeah, because I was already all, I was already holding on for dear life. What's up? Peterson Ranch Life. It's Vistaga. What's going on? Thanks for saying hello. Whether you're live or on demand or or never. Maybe you never watch this show. That's fine. Um, this could create bottlenecks, increase delays, costs on the northeastern seaboard. The port handles the most car imports and is among the largest for coal exports. This is a big problem other than you know, the news and the population and the devastation and the, you know, people already, uh, Derek Hopkins, uh, a fine line transportation was saying, you know, it's, uh, it's surreal. The bridge is gone. Yeah, it is surreal. Like after 9-11, the building's gone. It's surreal. So the, there's this surreal psychological effect. The bridge is gone. And, and then as the days unfold, we're going to find out how, how, you know, how deep this problem is. Man. Baltimore's ports, private and public terminals handled... Uh, well, that one's over over three, over three quarters of a million. Imports, exports, yeah. Man, this is huge. Uh, Ford Motor Co. CFO John Lawler said Tuesday the collapse of the bridge that shuttered the port of Baltimore will force the automaker to divert parts to other ports and impact its supply chain. It's going to have an impact. We'll have to divert parts to other ports. It'll probably lengthen the supply chain a bit. In the short term, our team has already secured shipping alternatives. Wow, that was fast. Um, G, the GM statement, situation has a minimal impact. We're working to reroute any vehicle shipments to other ports. It's going to have a huge impact. In other news, SVP Lang to lead Cox Automotive's reimagination of auto auctions. Now we're going to dive into this, but you know, this is where headlines, great job auto remarketing. You got me with the headline, reimagination of the auto auctions. What is this about? Cox Automotive's latest personnel move is being tasked with no less than leading the reimagination of auto auctions. Alan Lang has been promoted to Senior VP of Physical Services and Auctions for Cox Inventory Solutions, responsible for guiding auction operations, process, vehicle services, as part of the company's mission to play a larger role in buying, selling, and servicing of vehicles by diversifying client offerings. So that's one. Diversifying client offerings. Well, I want to learn more. I hope to learn more. It's about all I got out of this. But it does mean there's something going on. And it does mean that uh, with the central dispatch announcement, mic check, one, two, three, we know that, uh, oh, hey, Mark's going to enjoy the show from the shores of Lake Michigan. All right. That's awesome. That's so cool that you could do that. It's 2024 and you can do that. That's awesome. Um... With the Central Dispatch $100 million investment, it looks like there's a lot of Cox Automotive news, announcements, and, and information to get out. So I look forward to, hopefully I can help with that. Please let me know. 
By the way, the company said uh, Lang will lead Mannheim employees and leaders with a focus on making the digital buying experience as good as seeing it in person, providing real-time actionable data to help clients make more informed buying and selling decisions. Okay, cool. Oh, this is out of place, but it's a cool slide. You can put ATI in your booth. <laughs> you not only can you, you should. All right, let's keep going. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Disclaimer. You know, I because it contains the name of somebody within the news, I'm just going to leave out the name, but it is newsworthy. Here we go. ACV CEO sells over 300,000 shares. And the reason this is interesting is ACV, an online automotive marketplace for dealers, has reported a significant insider sale. I don't even appreciate, I, I, I wish it didn't even say insider sale. I'm assuming that's a technical term, but it sounds, you know, slanted. I don't really like slanted news where they keep having to add adjectives to, to you know, <laughs> change the story itself. But the CEO sold over 300,000 shares on March 21st of this year, and it caught the attention of investors and market analysts as insider sales, there it is again, can provide insights into a company's financial health and future prospects. Over the past year, the insider, see there it is again, really, can we, do we use another word? Whatever. Has sold a total of 1.5 million shares and has not made any share purchases. So, that's what makes it news. That's interesting. Okay, but maybe, you know, I don't know. I'm just reporting the news. The insider transaction, there it is again, reveals a pattern of insider selling, oh boy, with 53 insider sells recorded over the past year and no insider buys during the same period. Okay, so that's getting the attention. Many stock sells without repurchasing stock. That does get attention. On the valuation front, ACV shares were trading at $18.76 on the day of the recent sale, giving the company a market cap of over $3 billion, which, according to the price-to-GF value ratio, indicates that this company might be modestly overvalued. Okay. Well, and that's interesting. That is interesting, especially given the... Cox Automotive Reimagination of Auto Auctions announcement. So there's something going on there. I don't know what it is. It's interesting. Let's keep going. Ship.cars adopts drive chat communication feature for dispatchers. Now, again, in the ecosystem as I look at it, I find this pretty interesting. Is everybody in automotive going to find this interesting? Probably not. But I got to tell you, this is good news for everybody. You want technology to where, you know why, camera one, do you know why shippers, when they want to call a driver that goes to voicemail? Because the driver's driving, doesn't want to answer the phone. But if they can easily chat with a dispatcher that a shipper can easily chat with, maybe you're going to get somewhere. Ship.car is a software provider for the car hauling industry, offering a new driver chat function for dispatchers through a partnership with Logitext, a third-party communication service. Now it's called Driver Chat. New tool will be added to the Ship.car's Smart Haul TMS platform. Driver Chat aims to centralize communication with drivers, boosting efficiency for dispatchers, and contact for shipping customers there. Instead of relying on various devices, Driver Chat allows dispatchers to send SMS messages to a device, which hopefully is mounted right on the dash, and it can be seen and voice to text and, you know, have Alexa read it. <clears throat> Simultaneously, carriers and owner-operators gain the ability to monitor activities, accountability, efficiency, transparency, all those Cs. Driver Chat, greatly simplify communication. Very cool. Cool development. Found this interesting. This is again is on auto remarketing. IAA launches market alliance with Lithuanian auto shipper. Okay, let's keep going. I find number one, I'm always interested in what IAA and Copart news is because 
you know, they're kind of salvage auction yards. But IAA has entered into a new market alliance with Baltic Auto Shipping. Wow, Baltic Auto Shipping. And it reaches Lithuania. IAA's parent company, RB Global, as we remember, RB Global acquired IAA eh, two or three years ago, said the deal increases IAA's connectivity with the global buyer market and strengthens the auction company's presence in Eastern Europe. And if we recall, last week on ATI, we were talking about how ACB is in India now. It is a global world. The alliance's goal is to broaden the market of both companies, Lithuania and surrounding countries, so they can research, bid, and buy vehicles more efficiently. And for anybody on Central Dispatch, in the transport section of the automotive ecosystem here on ATI, Baltic Auto Shipping is one of those companies on Central Dispatch that as a dispatcher, you might call book loads for, and they usually were picking up at an IAA or a copart and going to a warehouse, right, near the port, right, because Baltic Auto Shipping seemed to uh, excel in the niche of um, salvage vehicle auction to warehouse, which would then be... I was wondering, what do they do at the warehouse exactly? Especially if it's semi-inoperable. Is it? Does somebody have to fix it? Does it go to a yard? Fascinating. Microcosm. Uh, let's go to, how much does it cost to replace an EV battery? You don't want to, you don't want to know. Well, you have to know. Uh, the cost of an EV battery, okay, 2025 Cadillac, Cadillac Escalade, Oh, it's over 22. Wow. It's over 22 grand for the battery. Dang. Total cost of the vehicle is 130 grand. The battery is 20 grand. That's over 17% of the cost of the vehicle. That's a, that's going to be a lot. Let's see. On the 2023 Tesla, it's 12 grand. That's 13% of the vehicle. I like this is a good chart. I like this. Uh, 2025 Ram 1500. Whoa, 25 grand for the battery, which is over 30% of the of the, the cost of the vehicle. The Rivian Amazon delivery van, it's a quarter of the vehicle. Mustang Mach E, 16%, and VW ID for 8,000. No, nowhere on there do you want to. Even the cheapest is the, the Mach E at six. That's still, man. It's a lot. So, uh, I know, more bad news. Automakers lose about six grand on every EV they sell. That blows. Here, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. Electric vehicle consumers, here's what they want out of an EV. 20-minute charging times. They want it to charge in 20 minutes. Which, you know, listen... In the world of gas, that's a long time. Who's ever stood, well, I'm going to guess anybody with an EV, but if you are if you have always had a gas vehicle, an ICE engine, when's the last time you stood at a gas station for 20 minutes? Like, maybe if you were talking to somebody, getting snacks. I suppose if you, but that assumes you can pull in and start and start charging. Still 20, man, I don't know. That sounds like a whole, man, that's fascinating stuff. Uh, they want 350-mile driving range. Not to mention payload. See, once you add payload, right, you're hauling something, man, that charge goes to heck. And they only want to pay 50 grand for the car. And there's only one car that satisfies those uh, expectations. The Hyundai Anik. Ionic 6, long range model. That's why automakers are losing money. Tesla, among other reasons. Tesla Cybertruck resale market loses all momentum. Oh, man. We knew that it was, you know, but good for Cybertruck. People seem to really be into this. Uh, okay. I'm not real worried about it, but sure. Yeah, Cybertruck away. Elon Musk mandates Tesla to install a demo full self-driving beta for every new delivery. 
in North America. Wow. So now they got to... That is interesting. Elon Musk mandates Tesla. Is this... Is it because of lawsuits? Is it because of deaths? You know, if you sit around long enough at, a, at any trade show and they're talking about EV... <laughs> One of the, the people are doing that right now. It, one of the things that people are thinking is, so what? How how reliable is full self driving? FSD, as they're calling it. I mean, and here, Tesla says it's really reliable. You just got to know how to use it. Uh, so requiring a demo drive with every new delivery is going to greatly increase the delivery workload at Tesla stores and delivery centers. The CEO seems aware as he finished his email. I know this will slow down delivery. But it is nonetheless a hard requirement. And it, you know, and it makes sense. But what does that look like? So the driver, what does that look like? I guess, well, another this is another reason for dealerships. Is that who better to educate the customer as they're buying a new vehicle than the dealership? Because let's say, let's say we go to the OEM agency model of delivery, where an OEM delivers straight to the customer. Who's going to give the demo? The auto shipping delivery guy? Boy, I'd like to see that. What I mean, and you know what I mean. Listen, there are definitely auto shipping delivery guys that are capable of doing it. Number one, they don't have the time. But they're not all capable of doing it. And if they even... I don't know. Is that part of when you go to be a driver for Tesla... Do you have to be able to give demos to new customers of the full self-drive? That sounds awesome. All right. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. No. <laughs> um, let's see. Wait, wrong screen. Here we go. Thank you. So Jim is here. What's up, Jim? Famil, treat the batteries like propane tanks exchange. Yeah, actually, that's... There you go. That's it. Um, Peach is here. Salvage gets packed into shipping containers, up to four containers, and is shipped. Right. That, you know what's in... It's in C and you, Michael, you know about this. But is there not additional information to know when delivering uh, salvage vehicles to the warehouse? Do they tell you what you need to know? We should do a show about that, Michael. Um, let's do that, actually. Delivering salvage. Delivering salvage vehicles. We should do that. That'd be a good show. All right, Michael, send, will you send me an email? Let's do that. Let's do... And that's this is what ATI is really all about. So it's kind of cool that we're going to go into what is ATI all about when you just saw it live. Um, there is... We'll do that in... Probably in May. That would make sense. We could probably do that in May. Worst case, June. Do me a favor. Stick around right after this. We're going to go into what is ATI all about and why. Why ATI? We'll be right back. The evolution of transportation. In the beginning of car shipping, there were stone tablets and woolly mammoths. Very primitive vehicle delivery. Then, horse-powered haulers with mile-long paper BOLs causing enormous time hassle and massive stacks of paperwork for dealers, shippers, and carriers. What were we thinking? But now, with modern technology and cell phone mobile apps, simply click a button, order quick, reliable auto transport to pick up and deliver your cars safely and on time. It's instant car shipping at the best market rate. Start saving money today and get signed up. Visit OneAuctionView.com. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verifications of loads where nobody ever answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021 
Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. Transport Auto Quoter is by far the leading auto quoting software on the market and the only auto quoter with a pro version that comes preset with accurate pricing for anywhere in the U.S. So you don't have to worry about it. The best part is that no change with your current software is needed. Just plug TAQ in and start booking jobs. Carriers can easily plug TAQ into their current websites and start making money right away. I bet you're wondering how we do this instantly and accurately 24-7. Well, constant analytics is the key. Our price watch team is constantly monitoring current market conditions, paying close attention to seasonal and quick moving industry changes. At the end of the day, it takes a lot of time and data to maintain good pricing, time that most of us just don't have on a daily basis. So free yourself up. Using TAQ Pro is really a no brainer. Save time and money, maximizing your leads and optimizing your online investments. You'll finally be able to sleep well at night knowing that TAQ is on the job selling for you 24-7. Never missing a potential job. Don't lose any more sleep worrying about missing leads. Get Transport Auto Quote or quote the right price the first time, every time. Run your business with TAQ. Visit transportautoquoter.com. Links are in the live chat. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do we say here? What do we get? Um, oh, I got to back it up. I got something about delivering salvage. <laughs> Well, that's why I want to do a show about it, right? Because somebody has to take out the garbage. Okay, that's... Where's the... Okay. Let's get moving on. I will... I'm already... Man, I can't believe it. I, You know, it, it amazes me. It's almost 7.30. I can't believe that I've already been talking for 30 minutes. So I'm really going to try to cut this off at 8. And I, 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 I basically... I prepared a bunch of... You know, like, golly, man. I mean, what, how did, how did I get here? What am I talking about? Why, why do I even do this? You know, um, someone once observed that I think differently. It's been noted that I, <laughs> I think differently. And, um, that's, it's interesting because, right, that's Apple. Steve Jobs says that. Think differently. Steve Jobs also says, the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. It's just that being crazy has some downsides. And thinking differently doesn't always. Uh, well, I learned a long time ago that I do think differently. I've known it for a, a long, long time. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to take this thinking differently stuff and I'm going to read Think and Grow Rich. I could, can I think differently and grow rich? Maybe. I thought maybe. I'll give it a shot. And I also, right, you've heard this one, do what you love and the money will follow. I thought, man, that's got to be true. Think differently be crazy, grow rich, follow the money. And so I got, man, I'm like, man, that's all right. So, uh, here's how I got here. So I, um, I, 1993 was a pretty good year for me. <laughs> 1993. That was the last time 30 years ago. Um, I, I wrote and directed a student film that got kind of best film. It wasn't like a voting thing, but, uh, you know, anyways, I had a strategic marketing class where we had a vaporware product. I cleaned up there too. It was awesome, man. That was so cool. Figuring that out. And so I have a degree in marketing, minor in communications, minor in English. And I thought, well, I'm going to use, okay, I'm going to use film marketing, English communications, Think and grow rich. Be different. I'm going to, okay. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to pick up this book. 
I got the book. I, I redlined it. I, I wonder how many people in the world have done that. I don't think anybody does this now. But this was a thing back in the 80s and 90s. This is an old book. And uh, I was very inspired. And, you know, basically, I made my way to Hollywood. And in, with some luck, I, by 96, I believe, I was on set. In Hollywood, learning the set, which is it really is pretty cool, and and I, I it, it it'll be forever with me. I got my own. Okay. Um. There's a lot going on. <laughs> this guy, this guy here, is probably an actor, right? He's dressed up in wardrobe, probably an extra, which is. The most glamorous of the non-glamorous things. Look, uh, look at all the crew. There is, what? Everybody is crew except for that guy. In fact, he's probably a stand-in. A stand-in is a glorified extra that gets paid uh, Screen Actors Guild minimum rate to stand in for the actual actor. And they do that so they can light him Get the focus. There's a lot. There's a lot going on here. I mean, these grip stands. That's a flag. This is a. This. I mean, wedges and tape and. Oh, this. You can see the wheels of the dolly here. And I mean, there's a lot going on here. Oh, look at all this stuff up here. And in fact, uh, one time I was so excited to stand next to camera. Um, that the cinematographer, he's, he looked at me and he goes, why are you so excited? I was like, this is awesome. And he's like, Jay, it's a box with a hole in it. And I get it now. What he means is, man, this looks awesome. Lots of money, lots happening. But if the shoot sucks, who cares how much money you spent? And I've never left that analysis. Because if this, if this scene is stupid, <laughs> who cares how much you spent to make it? Now, I happen to know that. I learned that 30 years ago. I carry that with me. Let's keep moving. So I discovered this thing called public access television. And it looks pretty lame, but it has the same box with a hole in it that this shoot has. If you can create something great with this, go for it. You should. And, uh, and so I tried. And I also, I tried, in, I, this is independent, like an independent radio. Uh, I, did, I tried that too. I even did, did some acting classes. I did all kinds of stuff. Oh, is it broken? Let me see here. We're live. And I'm going to talk about live too. Um, let's do this. Might have broke. Let's keep going. The thing about public access television, I actually know this guy. <laughs> I googled public access television. I know this guy, and what he does is he paints. See, he's got a he's got a canvas and he paints live. Perfect. Because I through my journey came to realize, you know what? You know, this all this production stuff. Oh, it, it did break. That is weird. All that production stuff, all that camera stuff, um, it's it's awesome. But if it's if it's just to tape, it's not the same for me. I like live. We're live now. You're live when you do things as you go through your life. You're live. It's not pre-taped. It's not scripted. The only part of your life that's not scripted or pre-taped or that is pre-taped, is like when you're dreaming. And then, I don't know what you're doing. You're sitting in the editing bay, right? I don't even know what, I don't even know. I 
What is dreaming? What is that? But otherwise, you're live. We're live now. It's live. But, but <laughs> making a crazy show live while painting is great fun, but is it business? And, and that's where I, I came to realize, oh, okay, we need to try to make a business. We've got to try to, what can we do live and it's business? And I actually worked for a live streaming company for a while. And um, I worked at a live streaming company 25 years ago. That's five years before YouTube. And I would do live streaming demos for clients. We would do tests. Um, we, you know, it was interesting. So, in, in fact, I realized, wow, you can incorporate, you can incorporate a live test demo as a sales pitch. And I was doing that 25 years ago and I liked it. I thought now this, there's something to this. Let's do more of this. Let's do more live content that contains a business prospect. Let's do that. And when we look at, uh, I pulled up this Alex Jones. Alex Jones actually started on public access, which proves that it's just a box with a hole in it. And because look at him now. Now, I am not weighing in on the value of the content, but there's no doubt that that content has relevant and impact, community, all the things you're looking for when you create a show. It has it. It's engaging, gets your attention, makes you run for the hills and, and, and buy protein and s seeds or whatever. So I, you know, over time I came to realize, man, you know, it's all about the, it's about the idea, which is maybe the hardest thing to sell. Um, I had tried to write different things. I couldn't get anybody to read it. And, um... But I knew the live experiment, media, business, marketing, information, live. That's where I want to be. That's what I want to do. So when I, man, I just fell into dispatching in 2012. And with, you know, I, at that time, I didn't really, I wasn't looking through the lens of a filmmaker. Um, it did happen over time as I, you know, I'm dispatching loads and booking loads and I thought, you know, this, this is interesting. And where, where's the, how, do, I mean, I learned from, you know, my supervisor of how to use this, but how do people learn this? And what are we hauling? Who are we calling? What are we doing? And I thought about these things and I thought, you know, there's, I'm going to be, I, I, you know, I decided I wanted, this is like 2014. Where's my... I decided I'm, I want to be. I want to train. I'm gonna create. Here it is. This is the actual original training materials. All right. These are. I mean, I've got. <laughs> I know at the beginning here. I've got some original uh, research and train uh, dispatch and you know methodology of of you know the carrier and. And I, so I started training uh, dispatchers. And in fact, I remember it was like 2014, having the thought I could I could go to trade shows, whatever those trade shows are. It was in my mind at the time. I could go to trade shows or events and teach dispatching. That was in 2014 I had that thought. And I was like, man, I you know, there's something to that. I don't know what it is. Um, and, but I did then in 2017, I think it was 2018 when I started making the, I did the car hauling dispatcher training series. I did it live. But before that, what really launched auto transport Intel was this video. It's not all about you. It's all about the car. It's the transport guy. I call this the transport guy, which is really funny because I look around, I see some content that is talking about that it's all about the people. It's not about the car. But this is automotive. No, it's about the car. I mean, it is. That's why it's the automotive industry. If it was all about the people, it'd be called the people industry. 
but it's all about the car. This is that it's the automotive industry. And this is another thing as I move through time. Being a student of media from the 90s, I don't agree with all the media agenda that I see. Uh, I don't, it doesn't matter. But I don't, I don't see it the same way. I don't, I don't, I don't, no. <laughs> no, I disagree. That's fine though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so keep it to yourself, Jay. So, Auto Transport Intel, by 2018, it's all about dispatching. It was great. I mean, it was cool. But I knew, I remember, uh, somebody had said to me, Jay, you're going to run out of shows. And I said, no, I'm not. Because I'm not going to, I'm not going to make the dispatching show for the next 30 years. Because I know, as a student of media, you can't do that. You know, look at any movie series, uh, Shrek or whatever. It's not the same story every time. They upgrade the story. They add a love interest or they add kids or they add a new journey or, you know, Cars the movie or uh, Despicable Me, whatever it is. You know, James Bond was able to fight the same villain for several years. But you, you got to upgrade that. And if if you stay in the same you know, spot you, you, your content's going to die. It is cuz things change. Life life moves on. Anyways, uh top 5 car hauling load boards. I knew when I made this video, man, I'm telling you now there are a couple blog posts. There's one that I wrote, which has been updated, but I have never seen anybody do this until I did this. Again, it doesn't matter, but I knew this could be a good idea. So I made top five car hauling load boards in 2019, 2018. Again, but it's still transportation. It's still auto transport Intel. Even in 2019, when I did software update, still really auto transport Intel. But it's high-level Intel, load board, driver app, TMS, CRM. What's a CRM? What are you talking about, Jay? And CRM was the beginning of the lifeline into bigger, broader, badder ecosystem. And I started sharing these, <laughs> making these crazy lists. And then I went to trade shows. Then I added the trade. This was 2019. This is NADA 2019 in Vegas. And and by the way, even at this time, it was still pretty much just me behind the wheel doing it, grinding it out. And for the record, I am going to set the record straight, it's pretty much always been me behind the wheel grinding it out. Regardless of what it looks like at times, you know who grinds this show out every day? Yeah. I'll take a little. I'll, I'll go ahead and take a little of that. <laughs> so when the pandemic hit, I thought, man, how am I going to grind it out now? I created State of Car Hauling, which is funny because there is now other uses of State of, but whatever. That's fine. Uh, state of car hauling was interesting and it really then broadened the horizons of, uh, I had a team member who, you know, talking about dealers and auctions and I'm talking about dispatch and software and it got pretty interesting actually. It really did. Um, the car hauler training school was interesting. That was an interesting idea. That idea... I don't know if that exists. I don't know if there's a need. I don't know where this is now. But ATI does not focus on car hauling training school anymore. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody that was ever trained is even still in business. But you know what? Live chat, feel free to comment. So, man, big picture, right? I'm still I'm focused on what is this channel? Um, 
when I, uh, in the 90s, because I, I mean, the 90s was a defining time for me. We all have these defining times. And I was obsessed with Fox News and CNN. And, you know, fake news this and whatever that. I don't care, right? I don't care. Because a channel is a channel. And I was very impressed with the way Fox News developed their programming. That's something I really love. I love the development of programming. It's very interesting. Um, and programs change. That's why I wanted a channel. That's why I built ATI as a channel. ATI has always been a channel of shows. Because shows can come and go, but the channel remains. And you'll see a team of independent filmmakers in this slide. Because it, you want a team, you need a team, but when team members do not hold up their end, you have to swap out the team. You have to swap out the show. You can't stay with something if it's not working. That's, a, that's hard. That is hard, but also it, that this is a business too. So I want to say, for the record, when I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn a lot, and I see all these like, oh my gosh, all this like, what do I say? Spiritual message, slogan, sharing. Man, oh man, do have I found out firsthand that the people that are really into this stuff... Are they really into this? What is going on? Is it just popular to be into it, but you're not really into it? Because if I, you're going to say relationship every other word, and then, oh my gosh, let's move on. But I just know this. That's part of the agenda stuff I'm talking about. I'm focused on real conversation, real information, marketing, media, community for real. Without all this other, you know, somebody once said, well, there's, you know, we're getting a lot of likes. I looked, dude, it's your company. The whole company liked it. No wonder you got likes. Please stop. <laughs> Nonetheless, since 2017, I just crossed a thousand videos. That is awesome. Yeah, I'll take it. Because I basically produced 99.99% of those videos. But I signed up for that. I'm not complaining. That's awesome. I love it. And I still look at who are all the other channels making stuff. What are the trade shows? What are the platforms? What type of media? Is it TV? Is it content? Is it a webinar? Is it a newsletter? Who's watching it? What are they spending? Who's their competition? And when I talk to companies, man, I talk like a marketing guy. Who are you? Who do people think you are? Who's on your team? I mean, I, if I see another, I, I, I see this. I don't know how many times the CEO gets interviewed and the rest of the team is ignored. No. No. That is not a study of a company. We've already heard from the CEO. Can you please find somebody else? By the way, if you keep, you know, poaching the same guests, come on, man. That's not media. That's an agenda. What are your benefits? What's your brand? What's your message? And yeah, great. You have a podcast. Awesome. That's not the end of the show. <laughs> I did it in my... See, and I do it in my speechy voice, right? That go that extra octave and I start sounding like I'm giving a speech. Because I do give speeches. Because I believe in communication of actual ideas. Of actual information. OEM, dealer, auction, transport, remarketing, fixed stops, compliance operations. Yeah, it's a pretty big niche. There is a lot to talk about, and those parts of the niche touch. So I make a bunch of different shows, 
and I have schedules that I do try to keep, even though I keep running over on time. And, uh, you know, I know the aspects of the show, the title and the description and the time codes and what kind of video is this and who's in the live chat? What are they saying? That's right. We're talking to you live chat. The embedded videos, the clickable links, the descriptions. There is so much to this. Fireside chat with Beck. That was a great video. That was a lot of work too. Man, that's another thing. The amount of preparation. So I like the live format because it's a live experiment. Remember the guy painting live? Well, he's got to have all of his paints ready and everything. Can't pause. You can't pause and go get some more paint. You got to be ready. Most of the work of a live program happens before you go live. During it is actually the least amount of work. But it's a totally different type of pressure. Because I'm live. I need the lights to stay on. I need the equipment to keep working. I need for somebody not to walk through the shot. Or a vehicle to show up right behind these windows and go crazy. So, you know, there is a lot. There's a lot to the production. That's why when I, I will sidebar here, when I see... I, I, and I do see, okay, I look at the automotive programming that comes and goes and continues to come and go. You know, when I started this channel in 2017, people would say to me, why, why did you start a YouTube channel? And I said, because not only is it a good idea, but it's about education, information, community, the automotive ecosystem. Right now, it's mainly about transportation and logistics but even there, there's a lot to know. How do people coming in know what you think they should know? Where is the logistics and transportation training school? There isn't one. You just have to learn it on the job. Most jobs you can learn at some kind of trade school, not transportation and logistics. Did you know that a lot of people now have their new employees watch ATI? Yeah, I know. That's amazing. That's real. How I don't know how many people have told me that. Or how many people watch this channel and you never see them in the live chat. I don't even know if they come up as a view, but they've watched it. They know about that show. They start saying things from the show. It's a lot of people. I don't even know how. I mean, I send out an email every Tuesday. I do a lot of social media. Yeah, I do do that. Because social media is an amazing new addition to old media. And I love, I, yeah, I look to see who opened it, right? Who opened the email? Um, this is neat. In the news segment of my show last Tuesday, which was Karsker, I talked about East Art Coalition, which is the 18 plus companies that are aligning in the name of modernizing titling because titling is a okay, archaic process i put i mentioned e i didn't even tag them i didn't even at them i just said east art coalition in the news and i got a like from east art coalition on the post from last tuesday's show even raven ai is right now repurposing a segment I did with them live from NADA. I gotta tell you, thank you so much, Raven. Uh, thank you, I'll give you it. And we got some new visitors. But I don't know why, I have never understood why more companies don't repurpose. Man, I mean, we're talking. All right, my Tuesday show is over 300 shows. And when you look at, think of all the panels and interviews, I can't believe more people don't repurpose that content. Actually, that's terrible feedback for me. Does that mean the programming is terrible? Actually, what the feedback I'm learning from what I watch is, and you see, I said, saw this with another company. This isn't even, this doesn't even affect me. Somebody, another podcaster or whatever, 
worked with a company to make some content, and what happened? That company went ahead and hired their own people or whatever to make their own content. There is this thing in automotive. It's got to be. I bet it's universal. It's got to be. That companies want to, just like everything else, want everything in-house. And they're going to create their content in-house. Not even going to work with a third-party vendor. Now, that's fine. But you know the problem there is, is if you create it in-house, there's at least a couple problems that I see. I've already seen it. I think I'm going to continue to see it. One, you can't keep up the schedule that your third-party provider could have kept up. That third party, they are a media person or whatever it is that they do. And if you do it in-house, well, you, you already have a job. So when you bring it in-house, your normal job will interfere with whatever it is you thought you were going to create. And now you're releasing stuff once a month. That's fine. No problem. The other problem is this. It sounds like an echo chamber. When your in-house media is created in-house and it's of in-house media creation theory, guess what? It sounds like in-house media. And you know what in-house media sounds like? A script. Hey, everybody. Welcome back again. You know, like, and that's that's actually not a bad version. Um, episode one's going to be bad. Here's something, too. I'm surprised that one of the big up-and-comers is on episode three. Really? Okay. All right, no problem. Um, there, I said it. You know, one of the things is I love the comments, and I wanted to pull up... I'm going to pull up the uh, comments page. That's the web. That's the uh, the website. Eh, website's okay. I don't really like building websites. I'd rather build content and programming. But um, let's look at the comments. It's pretty cool. Uh, this one I just got. Watched from start to finish. Great content. Super informative. That is so cool, man. Thank you, buddy. From Mozart. Mozart is... <laughs> awesome, Jay. Looking forward to it. Okay, see, those, those are me. That's me talking. Carvana should mention something about selling stolen cars. Cars are people too. That's a joke. Thank you. Uh, thanks for informing and helping us. How about Stingers? Great idea. I love the feedback. Thanks, Jay. Great show. Um, oh, here's a comment about Central Dispatch. Anything has to do with car transportation is now a scam, right? Because we get, man, we get negative on, on some of that stuff. But you could see, like, the community. Let's go to the community live. To the grinder. Um, I don't actually need, and that's actually why I think the live chat gets moderate because mostly I'm I'm usually talking. I saw this show. I've actually seen a few shows. We'll talk media theory here for a minute. Oh, and then I'll tell you what I learned, right? Because I said what I learned with ATI. I'm going to tell you what I learned. But media theory, I've seen some shows where, so I guess because, see, the, the problem with scripting is not only is it written, see, this is, a, this is just a checklist. This isn't even, the only scripting I have is just to read the ads. But otherwise, there's no script. I mean, what? Life does not have a script. And even if you used it, something would go wrong. Um, I've seen shows where they just go, let's go to the live chat and they're waiting for the live chat and they're waiting to interact. That's crazy. That's suicide actually. And that's actually what I learned back in public access back in the nineties is that I would see these live call in shows and you know, that was this, that was it. Hi, you're live on whatever show. Hi, well, this is stupid. You know, you're all stupid. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for calling and have a great day. And then they go to the next line. Hi, you're... Oh, there's nobody there. Oh. Well, we'll wait for another call. So we'll just wait. We'll just wait for another call. 
And, uh, and now you're focused only on the phone call. What is, why are you there? What do you, I don't know. What do you do? Are, are you, you know, are you, is this a religious show? Is this a, I don't know. We make clothing show, whatever it is. Just talk about what you do. Don't wait for the caller. Don't wait to be prompted. Don't you have anything to say? Right? Like there, you got it, man. There's got to be a purpose to you. Um, I say these things when I wrap up meetings with people, you know, let's talk about content. What's your brand? You know, what trade show? What's your marketing strategy? What, what have you made in the past that maybe it didn't work? Maybe we can fix it up. So, um, let's do this. Let's do Jay's. Oh, I think I already did that one. Jay's takeaways from, oh, no, that's not Jay's takeaways from making an automotive YouTube channel. It only took Jay one hour to get here, but he's here. Here's what I've learned. Um, now I did make a couple notes. It's not a script. I'm just looking at some notes. And that is that the automotive industry is huge. Uh, I've learned that through the thousand videos of ATI Auto Business. The automotive industry is so big that even a thousand videos later, there's another thousand videos to do. And, um, but it can't all be news. I saw a really, really big popular, uh, social media influencer say that they're going to redo the news, like transform news. Yeah, see, I'm going to I'm going to say no. Man, automotive news is still trying to reinvent the news, and that's what they do. Um, CBT News is very good at what they do. You are not going to reinvent the news beyond what CBT News is doing. It's not going to happen. There's another company that I kind of mentioned earlier, and I think they thought they were going to redo the news. They haven't. They're not going to be able to. If you're making a purely news-based show, you're looking at daily, daily headlines, daily changes. You're going to need a staff. And by the way, it'd be good if you had some news background, training, education or at least production assistant experience at a news desk you are not going to reinvent the news but go for it i can't wait to see what you come up with maybe you'll reinvent monthly news or i don't know but that's part of it too is that the automotive industry is so big that yeah you know, I, there, well, I don't know why there's 20 plus podcasts just in the dealer segment. There, no, that's too crowded. I don't even think it's 20. I think it's like 40. Seriously, the dealer segment is so crowded. I don't know how you reinvent that. Although, car dealership guy has done an amazing job of kind of reinventing it. And do you know what it was? unscripted reality the guy's not following a script now i don't need it to be a comparison here but i'm saying that when you go scripted you will lose your viewers you will you just have to you have to do a level of unscripted but i've learned that the automotive industry is huge i mean from dealers auctions bdc what the heck is bdc that's a dealership that's what handles the uh Business Development Center, BDC. Fixed stops, right? Service. And again, this the service drive in a dealership, yeah, that's a whole show. That's actually why. Fixed stops, round table. I'll stop there. Terminal, site entry agreements, AIAG inspection codes. There's so much to talk about. Companies, technology, teams, innovators, hardworking backbone of the industry. Not just the CEO again, my gosh. But I do, I mean, I do like to listen to CEOs from time to time. I just believe that there's more teams to talk to. And I'm not here to inspire anybody to take my ideas. <laughs> but I'm making a show because it's real. This is real information. What did I learn? 
I learned that the automotive industry is very fragmented. Um, there's a lot of opportunity, but and, and there's a lot of change all the time. But it's high stress. Um, people are here from all walks of life. There's a lot to learn, and there's a lot to keep up with. And there's a lot of people that have no interest in learning beyond what, what they're little. That's fine, too. I mean... Let's talk transportation for a second. There are so many carriers that don't look at it like a business. They're just driving around, picking up and delivering cars. That's fine, too. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know, does the DoorDash guy think that he's going to make a DoorDash empire? No, but some of them are thinking, hmm, what can I do? What else can I do? Maybe I should start a, a food restaurant. <laughs> A food restaurant, a restaurant, whatever it is. Some people are thinking entrepreneurism. Many people are not. Um, there's a lot of networking to do. Man, there are so many people in automotive. It's amazing how many people there are to meet, to learn from, to talk to, to share with. Um, there's a lot of niches, right? OEM, dealer, auction, transport, remarketing. Within remarketing, I put repossession within remarketing and even in repossession there's a ton to learn uh there's a lot of money in automotive but it's not easily obtainable but there is a ton of money and there's a lot of legacy and family in automotive i think most people in automotive have grown up in automotive but not everybody you could come from anywhere there are a lot of pitfalls uh, this is a tough industry, but a vibrant industry. You know, not all industries are vibrant, but automotive is. I think that's one of the things that's attractive about it. There's a lot of opportunity and potential and possibility, but there is also a lot of politics, whether it's office politics or actual politics or there's a, there is a, uh, but and that might be all industries as well. So I have tried to, in my time, I've tried to create an educational channel that helps build community and um, a network of learning and education. And I, I hope I've accomplished that. I hope that you've enjoyed it and that you've told somebody about it. And um, I'd like to think that there's another thousand episodes in ATI. I think there's a lot more work to do. But I also say this as a moment of reflection and um, thinking differently and being one of the crazy ones and um, trying to make a difference. Yeah, it's hard. We all have our own path and we all have our own... Uh, you know, stories and baggage and whatever it is, life is uh, life is very strange. And we, we think and grow rich, do what you love and the money will follow. We would like to believe those things, right, are part of the fabric of opportunity and reality. But as you as you, whatever it is, your whatever dream you're chasing or following. Sooner or later, you will have to look at it as a business. And uh, you'll have to look at what what income are you bringing in? What's the revenue? Who's your team? What are people doing? Who's, who's selling? Who's producing? And uh, then you're going to have to make some tough decisions because, yeah, at some point, it goes from just a passion project to a business. And that's when things get difficult but automotive is a really interesting industry to try to stake your claim so thanks for tuning in i appreciate it i really do i'm gonna run the car hauler again why not i want to thank one auction view murphy auto transport services and Superflow systems thank you for tuning in and watching whether you're live or on demand or whether you just heard about it and you told somebody thank you so much i appreciate that have a good night